the video and video with, with audio. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we've just added a dynamic parameter. I've noted in contrast to a static parameter, for a dynamic parameter, we can actually give it information. It's called an argument. It's associated with a formal parameter that, that it will need to do its job. In this case, it needs information about who's being considered as eligible for the intervention. You give it a person, and it will tell you, is this person eligible, yes or no? Okay. It will return a Boolean. That's why it's called a Boolean parameter. But it's a rule. It's a, a dynamic parameter is not a, a value. It's a rule. And we're going to be able to specify a different rule for different scenarios. For different, different experiments, OK? So ladies and gentlemen, we have this dynamic parameter we've added in. In contrast to a static parameter, where we just say it's Boolean, give it a default value. Here we're going to actually say it's, it, we, it's a rule. It takes in a person, and it tells us whether or not that person is eligible. So maybe, for example, I'll return the fact if they're eligible by saying if person dot age in years is less than 10, then they're eligible for the intervention. That's, so it is an intervention group. It's going to return a Boolean which says, are they in the intervention group? Okay. That's going to be the default value. But different scenarios are going to specify different rules. This is just the default rule, just like you have a default value for parameter. Different scenarios are going to be able to specify different rules here. OK? OK. That's the idea. Next, we're going to do something else. We've dragged in this parameter called perform intervention. Now, this parameter, as you might guess, is also a rule. It does something. It's not a value. It's not an assumed value. It's an assumed rule. It's a rule that says, OK, if you have someone who's subject to the intervention, what do we do to them? What, what action do we undertake on them? That sounds less transgressive. So this is going to be an action parameter, ladies and gentlemen. An action parameter. It's going to take in a person, one who, who is subject to the intervention, and it's going to undertake an action on that instrument, on that person. Okay? And the default action, we're going to sleep fine. We won't do anything by default. Nothing. Nothing. Okay? But different scenarios are going to be able to undertake different actions. They'll just specify different rules for this parameter. So Ladies and gentlemen, a dynamic parameter and an action parameter both allow scenarios to, under, to specify and undertake different rules. OK? Different rules that can be specified on a scenario by scenario basis, say for different types of interventions. So ladies and gentlemen, you notice when we said an action parameter, it eliminated, it showed us these argument area, but it eliminated the thing that said what, what's its, what type of value does it have. A dynamic parameter is different from an action parameter. A dynamic parameter returns a value, OK? Uh, uh, so this dynamic parameter had a value by default. And maybe by default, you know, I said this is the, the rule, but I'm going to eliminate that rule. I'm going to go back and say, is an intervention group the, the answer is going to be false. No one's in the intervention group by default. By default. Okay? Um, so is an intervention group, the fault value is false. This is the principle I told to Cheryl earlier, and in fact all of you, that normally we set, in a new parameter, we set it to have something that won't change the existing scenarios. So is an intervention group, intervention group by default, perform intervention will have a default value of nothing because no under action will be undertaken. 
but it's an action parameter, so you don't even have to specify what type it is. It's an action parameter. It's no type. It just does nothing. That's why it's a default action. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show that again, is an intervention group, is a dynamic parameter of type Boolean, default value false. By default, nobody's in an intervention. This perform intervention is an action parameter with no action being undertaken. Next. Mm. Mm. Indeed. Um, OK, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done. We're at the cusp of greatness. OK? I'm going to drag in the event. I drag in an event, and it's going to be called Undertake Intervention. OK? For the moment, we're going to leave it, because lunch beckons, we're going to leave it to occur once at the initial time. Now, we could actually change it so we could be more flexible. We could specify. No, make it actually happen 100 days in, or make it actually happen at the successive times. There's ways we could train this, and if people are interested um, tomorrow, I could, I could show them ways to generalize this. But there's going to be undertaken intervention. It's going to go off at the initial time. That's time zero. Occurs once, timeout. Those are just the defaults. And what it's going to do is the following. It's going to run through each person in the population, See if they're subject to the intervention. Do they match the criteria for the intervention? If so, do what? Perform the intervention action upon them. We'll undertake, maybe we'll improve their diet. Maybe we'll um, provide them with some education. Maybe we will lower the amount of time they spend infected by, by priming them to be able to be screened on a regular basis so they're identified if they're ill or what have you. So we're going to say here, for each person in the population, do you remember how you say that? You say for person, for each person in the this dot population. I'm going to use those curly brackets you've learned to apply. They make it quite clear. For each person, what do we first have to do? We have to check if they are subject to the intervention. If is in intervention group, and you'll notice it prompts me. What is it saying I can do with an is in information group? With a traditional parameter, I could just check is it true or false. But here, it's saying I can apply it to a what? I can give it what as an argument. I can give it, I can pass it what value to do its job. I can pass it, ladies and gentlemen, a person. Why does it have me pass it a person? Does anyone remember? Because do you remember I, when I showed you that? By the way, you could say, if it is, finish that second print. Why is it asking for a person? Remember when I defined it? I said it takes a person as an argument. It, takes, it needs this to do its job. The arguments are person. It needs this information to do its job. Because its job in life is going to see, is this person, is, are they in the intervention group? We could have called it, is person in the intervention group? We give it that person. If they are in the intervention group, guess what we're going to do? We're going to intervene upon them. We're going to say, perform intervention, and we're going to give it the person. We're going to perform the intervention upon them. OK? So for each person in the population, we're going to assess, are they in the intervention group? If so, we'll undertake the intervention upon them. Yes. 
ladies and gentlemen. So this provides us, so I'll, I'll build this. This is going to provide us with exquisite flexibility in undertaking intervention. Because in different scenarios, without modifying the underlying model, no change to main, no change to person, different scenarios will be able to specify different rules, who's eligible for the intervention, what intervention to undertake on them if they are eligible. Some may not have an intervention. Others may say, I want to intervene on kids less than 10 years old, and for each such child, I want to lower their, their time infected. Others may say, no, for each child less than 10, I want to you know, extend their immunity in some way, or I want to, to lower their contact rate. And we could do so without modifying the underlying model just through these things. So let's just take how it looks. I'm, I'm very cognizant of Christine there, who's, who's here to lead you, emancipate you to the, to the sumptuous splendor of the, of the faculty club. But um, here I'd like you to, to just examine for me, humor me by adding an alternative. I'd like you to copy baseline with birth. And I'd like you to paste it in. Paste it in. Here's baseline with birth one. And it's going to be baseline with birth one, ba baseline with birth, or sorry. OK. Intervention uh, 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 OK. Intervention. Um, so how about, sorry. I'm just thinking of a better name. Lower infection duration um, in ages 0 to 10 with birth. OK. Bit of a mouthful, but at least it communicates the goal. OK. This scenario is going to focus on those age 0 to 10, and it's going to lower their infection duration, maybe by a screening program or what have you. We could have a much more articulated intervention. Here, what I'm going to do is in intervention group, I'm going to change it to be a dynamic value. And in this case, we can ask, OK, is the person dot age in years less than or equal to 10.0? Why is that? Well, I'm doing ages 0 to 10. And if so, what's our? change going to be for that person? Well, we'd like to set there, and this is going to take a bit of frobbing, their duration of infection. Christina is shaking her head. Um, we're going to set their duration of infection specifically to be halved. The problem is right now, we only have one duration of infection shared amongst everyone, right? OK. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide each person with their own duration of infection. It's going to take not two minutes. I'd like you to right click on this and say copy from main. I'd like you to go to person, right click on mean duration of infection in Maine. I'd like you to go to person, and I'd like you to say paste. Boom. It goes into person. Next, what do we have to change to, to refer to it? In recovery, Instead of saying main mean duration of infection, what do we change it to? 
this dot mean duration of affection. Similarly, I'm going to add one parameter here. One parameter. It's going to be called contact rate. OK? In the palette, I want you to drag a parameter. It's going to be called contact rate. So all I did is I, I went to main. I went down main. I copied mean duration fraction, not cut, copied deliberately. I pasted it into person. I then introduced a new parameter called contact rate, which has a default value of 1.0 into person. So I created, I, I copied that mean duration of infection into person, and I copied contact rate into person. Okay? And here, I'm going to have, and this is the final change I'm going to make here to person. In this contact location, the rate is 1.0, hard-coded. I'm going to instead refer to what? This dot contact rate. So now we're going to parameterize their contact rate. Finally, I'm just going to, so, so what did I do to person? Let's be clear. Main, I right clicked on mean duration of infection and copied it. I pasted it into person. So now they have a mean duration of infection. I then referred to that in their recovery. I said this dot main duration of infection, where it used to say main dot mean duration of infection. So now it refers to their own, their personal duration of infection, because we're going to be varying that on a per person basis. Secondly, I created a new parameter called contact rate. It's a double. Its default value is 1.0. And I set this internal transition to refer to this dot contact rate. Before it was 1.0 hard coded. Now I want to be able to vary it. Contact rate. So, so what did I do? I just referred to this contact rate. Instead of hard coding 1.0, I referred to contact rate. And by the way, contact rate, I made the default value 1.0. I think I mentioned that. Next, sorry, question? This one? Yeah. All I did is referred to this dot contact rate. So before, this was 1.0, the rate. Now I'm on make it more flexible. I refer to contact rate. Next, I, I, that's all of the changes to person. Make sure, make sure that builds. Okay, okay. Now it needs, uh, now it needs to know what's the contact rate to assume. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we will go and copy this contact rate for a person up to main. Paste in main. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a default value of the contact rate and a default value of duration of infection that's going to be provided to each person as a default. And they're going to use that as their own by default. But if we change it through an intervention, we, we can change it on a per person basis. And they're actually going to use their own contact rate, their own one. So they're going to use the, the global one as by default, but otherwise they'll use theirs. And so we're almost done. And lunch beckons soon. Indeed. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen. Christine is being very patient, but patience, even in her, has its limits. Okay, so we're going to go to population. And you'll notice now, in population, we have two other entries here. Why do we have two other entries in the population? What are these things? They're for the new parameters at the individual level. 
So we will simply say this dot mean duration of infection. So for the duration of infection, mean duration of infection to assume for the agent, we'll just use the one in main, the value of the one in main by default. For contact rate, we'll just use the contact rate in main by default. So everyone in the population will by default get the values of mean duration of immunity. Oh, sorry. That should mean mean duration of infection, not immunity. Man, Man that was a close call. Infection. Infection. It's one of the problems with the autocomplete. Sometimes you autocomplete the wrong thing. And you don't notice it. There it is. So ladies and gentlemen, main has these two parameters, mean duration of infection and contact rate. We give it values for that. What gives it the values of parameters in main are given by what? By the, we've said it many times, by the experiment. So the experiment's going to give the default values to use for contact rate and mean duration of infection for everyone. For the population, we're just passing those down to each person in the population by default. Unless we intervene on them, that's the value we're going to give them. That's the value we're going to give them. It's just the default value. But in the intervention, we're going to be able to undertake an invention to change out the value of those parameters from under them. In which case, and they actually use their own values of these. They're actually referring within their logic to their contact rate, their own, and this recovery to their own. Their own contact uh, rate and the mean duration of infection start, we, we give them ones initially that are the same as for the whole population, for Maine. But if an intervention alters them for themselves, for that particular person, they'll use that. OK, we're almost done. We just have. Some, some small touch-up to do. Number one, touch-up, we have to deal with the fact that people are added in by immigration. For those people, we're also going to give them the contact rate and the, and the duration of infection that's used in Maine. Okay? Um, so you notice now, when we add a person to the population, it wants to know the mean duration of infection and the contact rate. I'm doing autocomplete and saying, hey, it's saying, give me these four things. Birth time we already have. Initial infection state. Now we need mean duration of infection and contact rate. We'll just give them the values in main. So I'll say this dot mean duration of infection. Boom. Just like that. Yours doesn't have to make the sound, but it can be good if it does. This dot contact rate. Boom. OK. This is in main. Sometimes I'll give you, a, I'll tell you a secret. Christine even makes that sound sometimes now. Mm. So what did I do? Ladies and gentlemen, just to remind you, in main, we have mean duration of infection and contact rate, which is the default one to use for people in the population. We specify it to the people in the population when we create the initial population. And we specify when someone is, it comes in through immigration, we use the ones in Maine as well as the default. But, if, but after that, they use them as their own. Each person has their own assumptions about this. By their default, they're the ones in Maine. But they actually refer to their own assumptions about them, which gives the flexibility to use their own. A parameter, ladies and gentlemen, of their own. And that allows the intervention to modify it on a per person basis, what their assumptions are, to have it be different than the contact rate for the whole population or mean duration for the whole population. So we specify when we create the initial population, by default for people, use the one in the population. When we immigrate people, we say, by default, use the one in Maine. That's why it's this. We're in Maine. This refers to Maine. This dot contact rate. And now, in the crowning jewel, 
or at least the last piece of the puzzle, we're going to do it for births that are added into the population. Where do births live in this model? Not the maternity ward. It's in person. OK. It's in person, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to add that birth into the population. And we have to tell it those last two things, ladies and gentlemen. We have to tell it mean duration of infection and contact rate. So we need to say main dot mean duration. We're adding this baby into the population. We need to give it the mean duration of infection for the main, the, the default one there. Unless the intervention has changed it, we're going to use the one in main and main dot contact rate. Main, oop, not mean. It's mean dot, oops, not mean dot main. <laughs> mean, main dot mean. Main dot contact rate. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the puzzle is complete, at least on my computer. If it's not on yours, press build and see if it's a happy camper. If it's not the TAs, lean and hungry, awaiting lunch, will, I was going to say descend on you, but they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll come and help you facilitate your finish up so they can go to lunch as well. Good. Um, okay, that sounded ravenous TAs descend on the participants. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't invite questions. Um, yeah, um, it's almost punishing people with questions. The TAs eat them. Hopefully that's not why it's called a boot camp. Um, OK, so we're going to build this model. Is it building OK for you folks? OK, now we can run it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you've done is a thing of beauty. More than that, it's a thing of glory. Ladies and gentlemen, here we've specified, oh, wait, sorry. We need to go to lower intervention duration, and we need to actually perform the intervention. So if we want to lower the intervention duration by a factor of two for the person at issue, what do we have to put as the logic here? We're going to lower it by a factor of two. We're going to say person dot mean duration of infection divided by equals 2.0. We divide it by a factor of 2. Or you can multiply it times equals 0.5. Or if you want to write it out longhand, you can, do, you can do so. You could write out here equals this divided by 2.0. That's also fine. Here, it's setting their mean duration of infection to be the half of what it is for the specific person who is in the intervention group. We could create another, having done that, make sure it builds. The TAs are, are mobilizing. OK, um, stand ready for mobilization. OK, um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, who needs TA help? The TAs can help you overcome this one, this one final resolution. OK? OK. Um, they either don't need help or they're beyond help. OK. Um, OK, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to now copy this scenario and paste it above. And we'll say paste. And we'll go down to the one that's pasted in. And we will say lower contact rate. Lower contact rate in ages 0 to 10 with birth. And how will this differ from the last one? Can anyone say? Well, we need to divide their contact rate by 2.0. Ladies and gentlemen, because I don't see anyone swooning yet, I, 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 I don't see anyone swooning, which means the full beauty of this may not be fully sinking in. But what we've achieved here is we have different scenarios. 
each scenario can have different interventions that it undertakes upon its own custom subset of the population. We could have some, some scenarios which say, I want to intervene in those 10 to 20 years old. I want to intervene in those between ages 0 to 5, or I want to intervene in those 50 to 60. We could have those, and we could, for each intervention, we could choose how it intervenes uh, to change the contact rate, change the infection duration. We could even, if we wanted to do so, do the following. We could copy this. I'm going to lower the contact rate, again, among those, not 0 to 10, but among the highest contact individuals. So I'm going to lower the contact rate in uh, high degree centrality individuals with birth. And here, whether they're in the intervention group depends on their degree centrality. It depends on the get connections number. Okay, this is the criteria here. Get connections number is less than, or sorry, greater than, let's say, 8. I'm going to intervene on them. In short, each scenario, each, in each experiment can specify its criteria by which to intervene on a group, a targeted group. This is the criteria for being in the targeted group. Here, it's my connections number. I have more than eight connections. For this one, it's I, I live in, I'm, I'm, my age is less than or equal to 10. And then each scenario can specify, as it see fit, how to change people in the intervention group. I want to change their contact rate. I want to change their infection duration. I want to change the duration of immunity. I want to lower their contact, uh, the, the number of contacts they have, or what have you. I could disconnect them from some of their contacts. What this allows is targeted interventions without changing the underlying model. All we have to do is add a new scenario, and we can undertake interventions in defined subsets of the population. Here, I lowered, for example, the contact rate in high degree centrality people at the starting time. And so I've, I've affected those individuals in terms of their contact rate by a factor of two, thereby blunting the degree to which those individuals are infected. So for each person who had the, matched this criteria, who had their at least eight, more than eight connections, I changed their contact rate by a factor of two. The others I left unchanged. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot to have achieved, especially on an empty stomach and with an instructor such as this. OK? So I would like to now put this model to bed rest. <laughs> Christine raises no objection. Hearing no objection, I'm going to save it. I'm going to post the model post haste as version 20. Fortunately, we need not wait for it because the buffet waits for us. OK? So we're going to visit now the buffet and all its resplendent, resplendent offerings. OK, um, and uh, we'll reconvene for the brave hearted who wish to return following lunch, where we'll be discussing several important topics. Calibration, big data, you, combining big data in these models, resources for further study, and as time allows, some explorations of one or two other high priority topics. Thank you very much for your patience, forbearance, despite the, the, the pangs of hunger.
Okay. How are you doing? All right. Um, are you okay giving that talk? Okay. Okay. So, the game plan. Oh, I should be recording this. Um, <laughs> 